Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Morning of Brief, Wednesday, July 22nd. Uh, as far as our morning and numbers, still just the six squadron members, but if you're catching this on replay, again, we are trying to uh, build out the uh, morning forum up here to talk about individual stocks. We talk a little bit about uh, day trading stuff and big picture investing themes. So that's what we're doing here in the morning. Please join us on a full-time basis uh, if you would like. Uh, up to 30 total episodes on the podcast. Had an interview yesterday. You can catch that at ototnow.com if you're interested. I have the video up there. And then uh, a little over a thousand still. So again, that's uh, trickling in. I will be hitting the uh, daily podcast routine again uh, starting this afternoon and uh, go from there. All right, again, if you're new, open the uh, chat window and Q&A windows, and you wanna make sure you have all panelists and all attendees selected. As far as our mission objectives, we're gonna talk about growing our money, protecting our money, and living off our money. Today's topic is a very aggressive um, uh, strategy that has been popularized this year, and today, Bill Ackman and his crew, you can see for the uh, tactical objectives there, are they have their opening, they're starting trading in their Pershing Square Tontin SPAC, again, SPAC Special Purpose Acquisition Company. And, and then Bill Ackman is obviously the lead, leader of um, Pershing Square. So pretty aggressive, pretty high risk, but I'm going into some of these names uh, and that we'll talk about uh, at the bottom there. And we'll talk about how it works and how it happens, but it's really pretty amazing. And again, that all takes place today. As far as our uh, flow, we'll do long, short, open, short, long. What that means, we'll talk long-term investing stuff primarily. Within 10 minutes of the open, we're going to talk some day trading stuff, get through the opening, see what moves for day trading, see what doesn't. We'll have our little competition that we do, and then go from there. You can take a real trade or you can take a paper trade uh, if you like. And then we transition back to the Q&A for questions that you guys put in the room. And then we go long again at the end, looking around uh, at our long themes that we follow on a daily basis. We start out with a market review. We go around the world as far as the different uh, markets that are out there and then come back to the US. We do a headline review of what's hot this morning. The six stocks we're gonna take a look at, the PSTHU is the Pershing Square Tontine Holdings. That is the SPAC that we're talking about specifically today. And that actually will, has not opened yet. So it's a blank chart right now. But we're talking about it. And again, I'll keep an eye on it. And I may put some long-term money towards it today. Um, and then there's five other names. All that came out of the special acquisition space through the IPO, you recognize some of those names were in most of them. Um, okay, as far as short-term day trading, we'll do that, execute the market, get open, like I talked about, and we'll go from there. Any contingencies, you have a technology, you can't hear me, you can't get logged on, whatever, uh, steve at ototnow.com is where you need to reach out. And standard disclaimer that this is an educational briefing, so you have to do your own due diligence before you act on anything you hear in this presentation. And with that, we're going to go up to the TD Ameritrade Big Board. We're looking at the SPY, which is the S&P 500, and this is a one-year chart. Uh, focusing primarily on those two guidelines that were still in the uptrend channel. Uh, I think we're eight days from the, the golden cross, which again, after you hit a golden cross where the moving averages converge, uh, that's where you generally see the market take off. And as strange as it is, the market's holding that, even with all the negative uh, COVID-19 news. And of course, the ramp up and volatility with the election uh, coming up. So you know, there, it's pretty amazing that the, mar the market just marches higher. So um, as you look at the end there, you can pretty much almost two, two to three weeks of a straight up move. So we're kind of due. I'm not calling it for today because today doesn't have enough uh, negative headlines. But we are due for one of those down days, one of those big, you know, two and a half percent, three percent down days. So don't get excited. Guess what? It's going to happen uh, here in not too long, in my opinion. OK, let's focus in on the last week. And I'll show you the, the trading. You can look at uh, yesterday's trading there in the blue. We're kind of doing pretty good all day long, well into the green. And then we had a pretty big stripe down there for the last about hour and a half of uh, trading. I didn't catch the headline that caused that, uh, but generally that's a headline news drop straight down. From there, the futures were up and then back down and then they're climbing back up. So we're almost even with the futures and we'll talk about those uh, here in a minute. Well, we'll go over earnings for the earnings calendar. A lot of earnings are uh, out this, this morning, uh, but it's all going to be trumped by the big issue of earnings after market, and that's going to be Tesla. 
again, this is, they do non-GAAP earnings, uh, so they can say whatever they want, and this should be their fourth consecutive quarter of, of having actual earnings, uh, which makes them eligible for the S&P 500. Now, what's interesting is they may not be an automatic ad, which everybody had said up to this point, but I read yesterday that the S&P 500 board is already basically scoffing, saying, well, we'll welcome Tesla as soon as they use gap earnings. So that may force them into actually following the same rules as everybody else. And if they have to do that, everybody's a little curious as to are their numbers actually what they say they are? You know, luck and coffee style, uh, surprised they were not. Uh, and then the stock, of course, craters and stops trading. So it'll be more of, a, of an interesting move to see if Elon Musk and gang says, no problemo, and just reports gap earnings and it's everything's nice and everybody's happy, or if some of the unbelievable numbers they've been reporting are more along the lines of the unbelievable. So we shall see. All right, with that, let's start talking some a long-term, uh, excuse me, headline review. Let's go to take a look at where we are as far as the futures. I would call that relatively flat uh, across the board. And again, we have a trend higher from the pre-market. It was a lot uglier when I first checked it a couple hours ago. Um, all right, let's go to Europe. Down across the board, almost a percent. Let's go to Asia. Uh, the big news is here was the Chinese market was actually uh, up. Um, and I can't remember exactly the headline of why it was up. It was up quite a bit, and then we started getting into the China-US tensions, which we'll get into the headlines, where we're kicking them out of Houston, and they're probably gonna kick us out of Wuhan in return. It's like, thank you. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll leave that place. Um, but anyhow, so the Chinese market was up uh, just slightly here after being up more earlier. Okay, let's check the uh, US market from yesterday. There are numbers, and again, we've seen the, the Tech either, you know, tech based NASDAQ either leading the way and leaving the Dow behind, or yesterday was a reset, right? So you have the old names, if you will, the larger value names coming back up while the NASDAQ names started to actually were almost a percent in the red. You just don't see that a whole lot. And lately that has been the case as they're out of sync. Uh, but if you look at the VIX overall on the right, um, again, a little bit of an increase in the VIX, um, but you know, below 30, so all is well right now. All right, let's take a look at bonds. Not a big move there. We'll take a look at oil. Um, oil, again, stabilized above 40. So you saw Exxon Mobil yesterday with a 5% move, and another oil name had a 7% move up. Can't remember which one offhand. Um, let's see, gold. Gold and silver are tracking higher. So again, we talked about how silver has been kind of exploding to the upside. Well, uh, even more so, right? So now I saw a crazy article this morning that said silver closing in on new highs. So I was like, what? Because I remember specifically the spot price being 34 because I sold some coins uh, back at that, you know, basically sold most of my coins at that time to, to move out of uh, the, the coin holdings. And I looked back and actually in 1980 and 2011, silver was almost $50. So yeah, and this guy wrote an article that silver's going to 50 in the next, uh, uh, you know, before the election. Okay, no, it's not. But, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll see is, you know, we'll see that at the end of the movie, but no, do not go uh, all in on silver after it just basically jumped about 30% in, a, in like two weeks. So, um, but overall, they're getting some love across the board for the precious metals. All right, we will go back to the main page and look at the headlines that are out there. Our topic of the day, obviously, is the Bill Ackman SPAC. Um, we'll get to that um, there in a second. You see, uh, you see his picture there at the uh, middle right. Okay, so we kicked China out of Houston, and I don't maybe fully appreciate why. I mean, yeah, it's an ugly headline, and yes, they're going to retaliate, but uh, I can't imagine that this is a huge deal. Um, there's some Chinese hackers that have been caught lately. And I mean, it's a sm small potato, if you will, I think in the big picture, uh, probably stuff that's been going on for a long time. Uh, there, that's the next one, vaccine hacking scheme. Yeah, okay, little stuff's going on. I do not see that it's huge because you see the next one is 
Ed Yardini, who is a gloom and doom forecast guy, who they only call him when they need him to say uh, what I would say is ridiculous stuff, like we're going to see a 20 to 30 percent meltdown uh, in the markets based off of this. Now, what I will say is people ask me regularly, hey, will the market go, go down if Biden wins? It's like, well, probably because of the uncertainty due to tax reform. Right. We know taxes are going up in that case. And really, that's what would cause the market to go down. And then people say, well, so if Trump gets elected, the market will go up. Right. And I'm like, no, almost assuredly, it will go down as well because of the China situation. So he's obviously got an issue with China. Um, he's doing what, in my opinion, are all the right things to correct the long term, long time uh, advantages that China's had out there is to get rid of those. So I, I, I believe in it in the long term. But in the short term, I think if he gets reelected, he's going to come out swinging at China. And yeah, that will uh, that will hit the market till everybody kind of figures out uh, what that is going to entail. OK, good news on the vaccine front. Uh, 100 million doses, two billion dollars uh, for the uh, vaccines. So cool. Uh, we shall see. I've heard it's going to be free. So I imagine those will uh, th that those will be gone like that. Right. Um, so and then uh, let's go ahead. We'll talk more about Ackman when we see a different headline down below which I think we shall see. If not, I'll close with it. Okay, uh, airlines again continuing to struggle. American is really in trouble, that's an opinion. But when you look at what all the other airlines are doing and they're kind of handling their business and American is in denial in my opinion and their leadership is clearly the most suspect out of any other group. So if we were to lose an airline out of this, uh, all, all my chips are on uh, American would be the one we would lose if we, lo if we lose a major. Okay, prepare for a downside correction in the fall. Well, July, another article of interest, July is traditionally a very strong month in the market and August and September are not compiled with an election coming up. So that whole you know kind of move to safety for your best in breed stocks, I don't care, I'm gonna hold them through. Uh, from the highly spec stuff, I don't care because they're not gonna act uh, in relation to this stuff. But there are some names I might move out of to get a little safe, more safety in the portfolio based off of uh, those two down, you know, the struggling months of August and September going into the election as well. And yeah, if we correct five to eight percent, remember, that's normal. That's no big deal uh, if it happens. Okay, uh, let's see. The Bill Ackman uh, headline down there at the bottom, so his new investment vehicle, he basically has one of these SPACs, right? So it's gonna be released today. And literally, it's been called the blank check company. So they're issuing shares, uh, 200 million shares at $20 is where they're gonna start trading. So if my math is right, that's $4 billion of money, people to invest, which they have no idea what he's gonna do with it. That's kind of insane, right? Four billion, just people just dumping money into it, and I might be on that train. Uh, I'm going to keep the chart up today. I'll see when it starts moving, and might throw some money at it. We shall see. Kind of don't like it, but all of these things, as we see when we review them, have been on fire. So you know, you can't you can't fight the trends that are out there. You just have to jump on board and be quick, be nimble, right, to get off if it changes. But all right, so let's scroll up, see what else we have down at the bottom. Uh, there is some that six tech, six tech stocks making up half the value of the NASDAQ 100. There is some concern about the market mismatch. You have such your powerful leaders and your Apples and Amazons out there uh, that they are kind of carrying the whole market. That's not good. You kind of want that broad leadership, not narrow leadership. So just something to keep an eye on. All right, we can keep going. Good news out of uh, mortgage demand. Uh, again, real estate has not been touched. There are, are numbers out there of like, you know, a third of the people aren't paying their rent. Uh, I don't buy that. Um, I mean, I, there's going to be some, but uh, overall, I think the housing market's pretty, pretty strong. Okay, let's leave the headlines. Before we go to the big board, let's look at the, uh, yeah, the Wikipedia LCA. This is one of the names that we'll look at. So, of interest here, so this is one of these blank check companies, these special purpose acquisition companies, the SPACs. So if you look at left or right, again, this is a year, the you know the stock price kind of went from nine to maybe above 10, and then look at how it was affected in COVID. It wasn't. 
I mean, that was a, basically a drop less than a dollar. So the market drops 35, this company hardly dropped at all. So I think people think there's a lot of safety in the name. So when you're thinking about, hey, today, today do I put a bunch of money with Bill Ackman? Um, there has not been a lot of downside. So you see everybody that was in this chart that was patient just kind of sat there until LCA recently, that's what, uh, end of June, early July, so recently started talking about the company they're going to back, and that's the Golden Nugget Online Gaming, um, which I started buying too. So you see it pops, and these generally follow this. You know, the huge pop settles back in, and then it starts its ramp ramp higher. Across the board, I'm in around 14, so I'm pretty happy uh, with the entry, all things considered. Obviously, you want lower if you could, but I'm not unhappy with where we are in uh, on that, and I do expect it to go higher. Okay, we can bring that down. We'll go over to Schwab Advisor Street Smart Edge, where again, you'll see the six names, the upper left, I have that pulled up for the um, Pershing Square Tontine Holdings, U, dot U. Uh, that's the name of the SPAC that is uh, Bill Ackman. So we'll see that start trading today. We'll probably visit it tomorrow. Uh, if you were to sit around and trade all day long, which is not advised, uh, you could also sit and watch this and take a trade. Uh, it would be a scalp. So it starts, it starts, I would just go long, buy, I don't know, 10,000 shares, hold it for about 30 seconds and sell it. Because <laughs> uh, it's probably, it's, you know, these things have been jumping uh, sort of thing. So uh, CCX, that's a relatively new name that you've heard me talk about uh, lately. Uh, I'm into that name. It is came out in Barron's that they're, gonna, they're about ready to make a move on Sunday is when Barron's releases. And obviously, uh, I think they're going to buy Topgolf. So, and I, I'm confident enough to where I put a bunch of money, money behind it yesterday and we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. It's one of the longs that we'll watch today because more and more people are hearing that. Okay, uh, LCA, we just talked about that. So that Lankady Holdings is gonna become Golden Nugget Online Gaming. Uh, Nicola, Nicola, excuse me, you're familiar with the EV, EV and hydrogen trucks out there. Uh, that came, was born out of the, you see it tracks along at $10 and then boom, it did touch over 100 and it's kind of settled in. They just did a secondary stock offering of um, $40. So the uh, uh, scalp and sorry, the scalp, thank you. Um, so Nicola, you know, right around $40, that's, uh, that's where they reissued a bunch of stock yesterday. So we'll take a look at Nicola Long as well. That's a lot of stock to be able to, uh, to wolf down or incorporate. Uh, space is Virgin Virgin Galactic. Uh, that was one of it was a while ago, but that's one of the most successful ones that's been out there. And then, of course, you're familiar with DraftKings because we talk about it all the time. Uh, DraftKings again dropped below 30, and it's been a steady march higher. There's a lot. I think it gets picked up because the ETF bets we talked about is starting to buy into it and get get a larger position out there. So overall, uh, I don't know of one of these spacs that have failed. Um, there will be one. So heads up, stay nimble. But um, yeah, I, these so far have been, they're the new IPO chain. I think more and more people will go through this. You do not have to deal with the SEC at all uh, and all the compliance stuff. So I think companies are like, that's gonna be the, the number one avenue is to go with the, um, to go with a special acquisition company. So uh, I think there were 61 this year already that have stood up and I would expect that are gonna explode to the upside um, the rest of the year. Okay, let's look at the tabs and we'll look at stuff that is in play. Uh, BL, BLNK, again, if you're familiar, that's the uh, EV charging. They got a big contract uh, today, so this will be a clear long uh, and has room to run. It really does. Uh, we're in this name for exactly this. So, Blink, uh, got a big $200 million contract. I'll pull it up actually off my phone. Uh, I got texted it this morning from a client. So thank you for sending me the stuff. Uh, blank charging award granted a grant from Virginia to have put in 200 fast level two charging stations um, across the state. So what does that mean? It puts these out there and then your Teslas and your Neos and all the other EV cars can, they have adapters to be able to plug in and do fast charging, uh, obviously at a cost, but they're starting to pop up everywhere. I also saw Neo yesterday, NIO, um, go ahead and bring that one up. Um, so you can see uh, Blink would be along, it's moved up. We're gonna see it, I'm sure, in, in a few, sl few slides here. Um, 
NEO, uh, 1288 to 1236, so it's actually gapping down right now. NEO has mobile charging trucks. So get this. So think a truck with a bunch of batteries in back, and they come to you. So guess what? That tells me one thing. People are running out of electricity like you know you do when you run out of gas. Oops. Um, so yeah, they'll come to you, or if you're on the upper end of uh, the financial spectrum and you just feel like it, uh, you can call them up and they, you know, the Uber of batteries, right? So they, you're at the restaurant and they can come charge your car while you're eating. I mean, I'm sure that costs a lot, but hey, whatever. Uh, I'm sure there's demand for it too. So we'll keep an eye on NEO today. It's not really setting up for a trade, but I do want to watch it um, based off of that news that came out last night or daytime over there. Okay, let's take a look at some other names. Uh, Pfizer, obviously on the move. So we can pull that chart up. So a ridiculous number of headlines. So PFE would be a long, it's set up perfectly for what we're looking for. So is um, BioNTech, which being T, thank you, BNTX. <laughs> I couldn't remember it. Uh, BNTX long uh, would be uh, what we can look at there too. Uh, 91 to 99, so what's that, 7% or so? We'll see it on the next slide, but yeah, setting up, setting up nicely uh, for gapping up. All right, what else is on here? We talked about NEO dropping, they're down 4%. I would not trade that, wouldn't touch silver. Snap is selling off. Uh, they had earnings yesterday, and again, they're professional money losers ever since they've been around. Um, so we'll pull up Snap's chart as far as a short. And what it traded on, it thought it was going to be a, there you go, apex predator into Snap. So let's talk about it. Yeah, what's the thesis here? Well, A, they always lose money, so that's fantastic. But they thought, and they were squawking about how positioned, that how well positioned they are to pick up Facebook's ad revenue, the people are not advertising on Facebook. And I would say like Snap's any better at monitoring this stuff and keeping out hate words and all that. Uh, they're not. Um, so, and then they, they did not get the pop in uh, daily active users, which is how they kind of measure their success. So the, uh, the point there is it's selling off after, and it's, it's run up hard. So I think that is a good short. I'm excited to see if that works out for you, Predator. Probably won't be 24 uh, R like it was on Monday, but maybe it will be. I don't know. And you don't get to take a day off just because you had a 24 hour trade. So, I mean, come on. Uh, we had Geach with us yesterday. So you missed Geach. Not with us today. Okay, let's go to the next slide. We've got seven minutes. All right, BNTX, we talked about gapping up 8%. LAD, I'm not familiar with, and it's a, it doesn't have the volume. Click on it anyway. I just kind of want to see if there's a headline. Lithium Motors. Who is Lithium Motor? What do they make? Um, all right. We will come back to that. Let's pull up uh, Spotify uh, over, yep, in there. And do me a favor and look up uh, Lithium and see what you can find on them uh, while I talk about Spot. Okay, Spot. New leasing deal, again, they just bought a podcast, Joe Rogan's. I think they're in talks with uh, Kim Kardashian as well. I think that actually might have gone through. So anyhow, they've got some uh, new licensing stuff out there, which is kind of, uh, which is good. So you could, you could take a look at Spotify. That would be a long, we'll keep it in the cross check. All right, we have Lithia Motors pulled up and it is, not telling us a whole lot of who's behind it. Uh, let's go click about Lithia, about us. Okay. No, yeah, no. All right, I give up. Can't decode it. All right, we will get back to our game. Uh, let's look at decliners today. Again, market's right about even, so I think uh, looking for a nice short out there will be good. Uh, low volume, biggest volume is First Energy out there. Let's click on FE. I'm not familiar with that name, but it meets our criteria. First Energy Corp. 
cuts rating over nuclear bailout bribery inquiry. I, you talk about bingo of bad word, you know, bad names. <laughs> bribery and nuclear in the same sentence, not good. Dividends, they just had earnings. So, all right, uh, down 10%, we'll come back to it. Let's see, no, uh, Novavax, gap and down, bless you. Uh, gap and down probably because of the money that's flowing into Pfizer and BioNTech. So not really going to watch that there. Let's take a look at the uh, next one. Okay, Pfizer gapping up. Do I have that written down? I do. I think you could take that long. May not get three hours, but you could hold it nice and tight and you might. Uh, Spotify, we already talked about. Yeah, let's click on Fortress Value. I don't know what that is. Fortress Value has acquisition in the name. This is probably a SPAC, to be honest. Um, so we'll keep an eye on it. We're uh, see what we can get. Nothing on uh, nothing on Finbiz. So maybe it's just uh, maybe it's like uh, the other stuff just starting to trade. All right, let's look at the last tab. Blink 20%, long-term name, gotta like that. BNTX, again, it'd be an option we talked about. Not familiar with that CTSO, not gonna take a look. A lot of bio names and then silver at the bottom. All right, well, we will take a look at cytosorbents. Take a look at that one. Okay, common shares at 950. So it closed at 950 and now it's up at 10. Why would it not be at 950 if they just announced that it's gonna be at 950? So we are gonna to touch that. That should reset down to that range. All right, let's go over to the left-hand screen and Do adults actually use Snap? Not much. Nope. Let's go, uh, yep, whatever you want to put there as far as you got Blink, and then we'll look at Snap, and then Pfizer. All right, 50 cent stop on Pfizer. I like that. I think that's about right. Snap, 20 cent stop. Uh, it's flopping around. Well, now I guess it's that chart's a lot different scale there. So yeah, you, you could, um, you'll be able to get three R easy out of that. I think out of a snap um, at 20, we'll see. All right, blink selling off a little bit there into the open. I'm gonna take a look at what I want to do for my trade. We've got a minute and a half. Pull CCX on that left chart. CCX. Not much volume would be the issue there. Uh, BNTX long would be basically the same as Pfizer, except for just the German side of it. Topped out at 102 down. I like where that's set up, set up anyway. Uh, let's see, FE short, let's pull that one up. Again, I don't know what it is, but boy, is that selling, selling off kind of hard. Click back over here to decliners. I'm looking on another screen at that FE kind of numbers down at 10% first energy. Um, bring it up again on the left hand chart. Uh, 30 seconds for me. Yeah, that's nuclear and bailout. So put me in for FE short at the open. Uh, dollar stop and out at three minutes. Yep, good to go. All right, that's all. That's like it's almost a scalp. All right. Into the opening bell, here we go.
Look at that. Look at that. That's a nice entry and snap for short, actually. Uh, were you in at the open? Nope, in at two. All right, let's. I'm in at the open and FE short. So let's draw mine up there first because I might be getting busted out here. No, oh, we're not too bad. So, yep, probably 2901. There we go. All right, and I've got up to 30, up to 30.01. There you go. All right, so that's my stop on uh, FE short. All right, over to Pfizer, in at the open, and the stop was 50 cents. So 38.23, that'd be 38.73. So plenty of room on that 50 cent stop, I think, so. Oh, Pfizer long, sorry, uh, I'm, my math is backwards. So yeah, that's a long move. So what's that, 37.73, very nice, thank you. So that's how we have those two trades are working. All right, snap, we're gonna be in at, in 30 seconds at the minute two number. And again, that's a short. So I like the setup and snap. I really do. Market's going uh, higher there. Snap's already trying to move its way down. Ten seconds to the entry on snap. Not a lot of volume in Pfizer. It's kind of weird. All right, so that's the entry there on Snap. Looks like to be a good one. 23.38, and you had, what, a 20 cent stop. So 23.58 will be the stop on Snap. Thank you. If it holds, I think you're gonna like it. But it's, boy, it's right there, huh? Still in the trade. Market's going higher, that's not helping things. But I do think Snap has the potential to roll over and still hit your three hours from there. All right, FE is selling off, whatever it is. Uh, there's your selling, that's the strike down you look for. Pfizer not going much higher, snap hanging on. All right, let's talk about some other names. Uh, my trade's working, so we'll come back to it. Um, Blink, B-L-N-K. Uh, let's see, up 20%, so kind of not moving there. Actually, my trade's probably already closed out or closes out at the end of this minute. All right, Snap just busted out the top side. So let's go back to FE on the left. All right, I would I say I'm out at three, so I'll be out. Time to drop, go down, out. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right, 15 seconds till we close out my trade on FE. And a pretty nice drop, but it's bouncing back here. All right, so it looks like 2860. So I had what a 50 or I had a dollar stop. So 40 cents. So 0.4 R for me in the green. So that'll be the mark to beat uh, for burner. Uh, we'll leave mine up there now and we'll use the middle screen. I do I I think you could short snap here if you're using real time or you know paper trade or whatever. Yeah, I don't see snap going higher from here, but we shall see. Let's uh, use snap though, and let's look at CCX long. I really like that move till I saw it was only 15 cents, but okay. So not a lot of trading going on there. You can see it's, uh, it's not moving a whole lot, but I think it will uh, throughout the day. So that's working. Uh, in KLA, this would be a long. 39, so about 60 cent move down from the open. 
is kind of setting up for long now. Pfizer's starting to work, so that's nice. Let's look at uh, Neo again. I hit uh, in the le in the middle screen. So it had sold off in the morning. I wrote it down as a long. Uh, I do think Neo ends up going higher today, especially if the market continues higher. Uh, markets are in the just barely in the green across the board, all three of them. Let's take a look at, let's see, Pfizer, we already have pulled up. BNTX, see if that would have worked or if it's probably tracking about similar to Pfizer. Yeah, anybody who got in at the open would, would have been out. That's a $3 move right there. Still kind of down, so that's a profit-taking type move. I don't know. That could, that could end up going higher from here. Uh, Snap, we talked about Spotify was a long SPOT. So opened at around 288, so about an $8 move and a $300 stock. That's not too bad. Up 6% on the day. Again, it's a good long name to, to hold. Uh, FE, we have Cook and Short on the left. Let's, uh, let's check out uh, Luckin. See what the world of Luckin holds today. Down 3.5%. Let's check out um, LCA. Down a percent or so. Let's check out, check out Shell, S-H-L-L. -L. All right, and Tesla. See what Tesla's doing. Selling off a little bit before, uh, before earnings. All right, let's put the, uh, the big board over here. And so we can keep an eye on a few things. And let's on the left check, uh, let's go to charts. And see what's in move. Oh, Clickstream's up a little bit, 22%. Again, penny stock. Blink up 18. Northwest Bio in play. Nice, up 5%. CCX up 2%. Tesla, Coke, PayPal, Palo Alto, IBM. I think we'll be going higher from the uh, from the good earnings that they had and new leadership. I like it. Mastercard in play a little bit. Intel. All right, let's check, see what's down. Neo off 3.8, there's Luckin right with it. Brigham Minerals been on fire, so it's taking a little breather. Alibaba down a couple percent, that's that China, China headline likely, same with 10 cent. LCMB down a little bit after beating earnings yesterday. DraftKings down a little bit. Okay, you can put the winners back up there and go back to the uh, day trading chart. All right, let's see when the burner is out at 10 minutes. So we've got a little bit, a uh, couple minutes to go there. Uh, FE continues to sell. Uh, actually, FE, I think, got stopped out. So uh, let's see, from the open, that's only a uh, like 5% move or so, but maybe it's the entirety of the move down that 20%. So anyhow, stopped out. Let's see. Let's check back on BNTX, see if that's going higher. Starting to go higher, just like Pfizer is. Very nice. All right. And check back on Snap on that screen. See if Snap's ever started to sell off. I still think Snap has a move down further in it today, even though it's uh, not setting up per our criteria, if you will. All right, let's uh, figure out where the burner's gonna end up here. So he's, at, he's in a 3823. So his one R trade would be at, where are we at, 50 cents. So 38.73 is one R. So he's hanging up there just short of the 0.4 R mark. All right, so we'll let that cook. I'm looking off on another screen. Apple's down a little bit today. Alibaba, we talked about down a little bit. 
click streams up at eight cents. So that's a 14 cent move there. IBM up, Intel up. Kohl's got a big downgrade today. Uh, I want to buy this stock, but I just can't get myself to because it's uh, it's too much a house of pain. Um, it's down 5% today. Pfizer's up 3.8. That's what we're looking at right here. It used to be up a little bit more. Tesla up 2% going into earnings now, so they're up over $1,600. There was a price target raised today from uh, 500 to 800 from one of the, the major houses out there. So, all right, 30 seconds, so we close out burners trade. Yeah, in my Northwest bio, I don't follow that a lot, but have a little bit. Um, so we shall see, uh, but they've, uh, they've obviously, I think, doubled since the entry point. So, so well done on that. Looking at the chart and seeing what we have, or looking at the chat, seeing what we have. All right. Um, in the upper left, put, um, the one with the back, the Bill Ackman's holding. Let's see, that was PSTHU, I believe. Yep, and if you could put it up here just so, so we can see when it starts trading. It should, I generally think start trading around noon, but I do want to have it up. Um, okay, it looks like Pfizer is out in the red there for the burner. So gets the red X of shame, which Geech and I talked about yesterday. He says I should get t-shirts and send that out to, uh, to folks. I like it. Um, so I'll be the winner today on my FE trade that actually uh, looks like it's, well, it's halted, but um, continuing down there. So, all right, that's what I've got there. Let's take a look at the question think they will all be down a little because during the closure of the China consulate? Yeah, I do. Um, so good question. I think that they will also move down on whatever China, China has vowed to re retaliate. So the market will anticipate today some news. Again, it's night or, you know, we're out of sync time-wise, but certainly towards the end of our day, off into the aftermarket, we could get an early morning China time uh, update on their retaliation. And again, they said they were going to, um, there's rumors, I guess, that they're going to kick us out of the Wuhan territory. It's like, that'd be the way, that'd be the place I'd want to be kicked out of if it were me. Um, but, you know, we'll see if that cascades into something or if this is nothing, you know, just one and done. So more, stay tuned on headlines. All right. Last thing, let's go ahead and uh, FE's back open and selling off even more. But we can bring that down. We'll go back to Google Chrome and we'll look at the tab. It's, it's called uh, Bill Ackman's Blank Check. Uh, this is an article. We talked about some of this already, but yeah, we can continue to scroll up here. So yeah, $200 million. And uh, last week they were only going to raise $3 billion. They've seen the popularity of these things. They're going up to $4 billion. Uh, there's a warrant piece of it. So each unit has one. Hey, good job on, uh, on Snap there. 390, I like it. Uh, let's see, you get a warrant as well. So that can be a little bit confusing, but when you have a five letter ticker, SP or PSTH.U, that means there's a piece of a warrant in there. So get this, so Ackman hasn't revealed which companies he's eyeing to take over. He's looking for high quality venture backed businesses, excuse me, mature unicorns, if you will. So how funny is that? All right, let's continue up. And keep going. Okay, there's the one I was looking for. SPAC activity has been on a tear um, in 2020. So 45 firms go public and collectively worth $14 billion. So that's kind of uh, crazy. So you see the most recently former Citigroup Closed the biggest SPAC takeover by acquiring uh, healthcare for 11 billion on July 13th. Um, SPAC used in the deal was Churchill Capital Three, so you may recognize that name. That's CCXX. Just closed that deal. CCX is the one that we're in, based off of the Top Golf takeover. So, all right, that's all we I have for you today. So, thanks for being here in the morning. Hope you enjoyed it and learned it. And if you are visiting or watching this on replay, again, you can go to ototnow.com for your for uh, more information on on how to join and reach out to Steve at otot.com 
ototnow.com if you have any questions. With that, I'll let you go and talk to you later.